Hi everyone, if you wanna draw a cute character in Photoshop, then prepare it to be imported and animated in Unity Engine, then this video is for you. So we will cover two parts. The first part is related to Photoshop. We will draw 2D cute character, then prepare it to be imported to Unity Engine by exporting a PSB file. The second part contains how to rig, IK and animate your character. I hope you will like my squirrel that I drew it and my uncle will draw it on the Photoshop again and he'll teach you today how to draw in the, on this app and let's get started. Your starting point will be hiring an artist to draw a sketch for your character or asking your niece to draw one. This sketch has been provided by my niece Lulia, so I'll start from that. All the drawings will be based on the curvature tool which allows you to create nice curves between two points. And additionally, it allows you to create a corner by double clicking on any point. Creating a layer for each body limb, so let's start with the face and draw some points to cover the face to create the outline of the face. It's a very easy tool that allows you to create nice curves by just clicking on the curves of the sketch that you have and choosing whether the point is a, a corner or a curve. So I'll fast forward a bit here till I finish the outline of the face. After you close the outline, select the brush tool, set the size to 12 and make sure you selected the hard round brush. Then go to brush settings and activate the shape dynamics and make sure that the minimum diameter has been set to something like 30%. This will simulate the brush pressure. Then select the curvature tool again, right click and select stroke pass. Select the brush and activate brush pressure simulation. But seems the brush size is too big so let's reduce it to something like 6 and change the foreground color to black then try again. Now seems the outline looks nice. Now we can fill the face outline with any color we want so choose any color maybe for squirrel we choose something orange then right click on the pass using the curvature tool and select fill pass to create an eye catchy graphics the first step was to create the outline then the fill the third step is to create the highlights and shadows so we can assume that the light coming from the top left of the screen then we should highlight the top left of the character face we do the opposite to the bottom right and we do shadow areas so to create the highlight, we select an area of the face from the top left. We can do that easily by moving the points from right to left, then fill it with a lighter grade of the color. Then we do the opposite for the bottom right of the face and select an area there and color it with a darker grade of the color. To create a professional animations, you need in advance to know which body parts you want to move. So for example, if you don't want to move the eyes, you just simply put them on the head layer. But I wanted to move the eyes in the animation, so I created a new layer and name it eyes, because we will give a bones for the eyes to blink later in the animation phase. And simply we repeat this process for all, all body parts, for the eyes, for the hands, for the main body, for the chest, for the tail and for the legs. So the first step creating the outline, the second step filling 
with the main color, then creating the highlights and shadows, and finally adding some details. I'll fast forward from now till finishing the drawings, because this is up to your creativity. In the end you should get the following structure, one face, eyes, two hands, two legs, and the main body. Save the file as PSB not PSD to be able to import it correctly to Unity Engine. Create new Unity 2D project, I'm using the latest LTS version 2020.3.27. Import the PSB file, select it then click on the sprite editor to start rigging the character. The first step is to create the bones. So we need to create bones for each limb we want to move. Skinning editor and click on create bone and start creating bones from the main body bone, then create the chest bone, then create the head bone. Then from the chest bone you can create the left shoulder and the left hand, the same for the right shoulder and the right hand. Then from the main bone you can create the left leg and the left feet, the same for the right leg and the right feet. We also need to animate the tail, so let's create few bones for that, starting from the main bone. So creating three or four bones for the tail will be enough to animate it perfectly. Let's create one bone for the eyes and for additional details we can create two bones for the ears. To keep things well organized it's better and always recommended to name all the bones perfectly. So let's do that quickly. Then click on auto geometry and click generate for all visible. That will auto create the geometry for all the sprites of our character but seems I made a little mistake and I kept the white background visible in the PSB file. So let's open that, delete the background layer, save and go back to the sprite editor. Now click on auto geometry again and click generate for all visible. Now we got a good geometry for the sprites based on the position of each bone. And if you want to experiment a bit, you can move each bone and check how the sprite reacts to it. Of course, you'll find a lot of faults because this is auto-generated and only human can decide which body part moving perfectly. So let's fix some mistakes or issues here. For example, this issue between the head bone, which is the green bone, and the eyes bone, which is the blue one. If we move the head bone, it will be affected by the eye bone. So 
to separate the influence, we can click on the Bone Influence button, click on the Eye Sprite and make it only affected by the eye bone. So we delete the head bone from that. Still the same, if we rotate the eye bone, it will affect the head bone. So we click now on the head sprite and remove the influence of the eye bone from it. At the same time, you can check the list of all bones that affects the head sprite on the bottom right here and remove the bones that you don't want to affect the head sprite. So for example, we don't want the chest bone to affect the head sprite, so we can simply remove that too. Another issue that you might face is that one bone affecting the, the sprite more than desired. So to solve that, we go to the weight brush button and then we can decide how much each bone affects the sprite. So click on the weight brush, then click on the bone that you want to decide where it affects, then you can paint on the sprite how much the points on the geometry affected by the bone. Keep experimenting with that till reaching a satisfying result, which is the head bone should affect most of the, the head sprite except the ears area should be affected only by the ears bones. We keep repeating this process for all body limbs to make sure that all the bones moving perfectly without any issues. I'll fast forward here a bit till we finish this process. Apply the changes and drag your character to the scene. Now we have to do the magical step, which is the animation process. By adding the inverse kinematics, the IK, so add to the parent game object, the squirrel in our case, the IK manager, then click on add limp, it will automatically create a new game object. We will start by animating the left hand, so rename that to left hand controller then we need to reach the tip of our hand so we go to the chest bone which contains the left shoulder bone and the left hand under the left hand we create a new game object and name it left hand IK then we set the coordinates from global to local and drag the position to the end tip of the hand. Then we go back to the left hand controller and add the left hand IK to the effector then click create target. That will create a point for us that allows us to control the left hand magically. Repeat this process for all other limbs, the right hand, the right leg and the left leg to get the perfect results. Now we have our character fully rigged and ready to be animated. So let's create a new folder and name it animations to save all the animations later in it. Then open the animation tab. If you're not seeing it, just go to the window, select animation, then animation. So let's create maybe the idle animation. With that, we start from the main bone 
and we go to frame 13, move it a bit to the right, it will auto create a keyframe at that point. Then we copy the first frame to frame 60 to auto repeat the animation. That, me that makes the animation look seamless without any interruption by copying the first frame to the last frame. We should always follow that route uh, rule to get that smooth seamless loop of animations. I wanted that squirrel to be animated saying hi to the audience so at frame 15 we set the position of the hand like I'm showing you now and we can also change the first frame so he always moving his hand. So let's go to first frame, first frame, raise his hand a bit, then move it a bit to the left. Then we can copy those two frames, each 15 frames. When we click, click play, it will seem that he is moving his hand as saying hi or goodbye, which seems good for this animation example. To add more details, we can move the head and the ears to make a better high quality animation. So we can tilt the head to the left a bit in the middle of the animation at frame 30. Also we can animate the ears to give some animations to the ears which make them feel more realistic. And here is another trick to make a better animations is to scatter the limbs animations from the same frame. As you can see now, everything has been timed to be at frame 30. So we can scatter those frames around the 30 frame to give a better animation. So not all the limbs moving at the same time, that will create a robotic animation. This way you can always get a better animations. To provide further details, we can make the eyes blinks around frame 30. So maybe around frame 30, we close the eyes by scaling it on the Y axis. Then we reopen them before and after the keyframe 30 to provide that nice blink animation. And that's it for today's video. If you kept watching till now, you have learned how to draw, rig and animate your characters for your Unity engine games. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the notification bell so you keep updated with our quality tutorials. Thanks to my niece Lulia for providing me with this sketch of the cute squirrel and of course we are deeply thankful for all your generous support on Patreon. Till next video, see you soon.